Hello everyone, Preston Ticks on Friday. I'm the MC of the program. I am Professor Cho Inho. It has been two weeks since the last time. The COVID-19 is pressing us down, but let's cheer up. Prostontics on Friday is broadcast live, so real-time communication can be made. Please leave your questions on the YouTube through the Q&A. We will try to answer them. Thank you very much for your participation. This is the second episode, and the speaker is Dr. Kim ki Sung, Namsang Dental Clinic. He's going to talk about the types and merits of osteo implants. Thank you for your listening. Hello everyone, I am Kim ki Sung, Namsang Dental Clinic. I will speak about the types and merits of osteo implant system. Currently, osteo implants have a very wide variety of implants, as you can see, US, SS, TS, MS, and the latest one, KS. Various systems are available. They stand for these words. KS stands for Key Solution, which is the latest one. There are many different implant systems. In the osteum implant system, we can classify them into different categories. Implant used to be submerged in bone, and after osseo integration, the second surgery is done. So, two stage surgery versus one stage surgery. Ostem implant system, US and SS, sorry, US and TS, were designed to be submerged. There are implants with the gingival level colors, SS or MS series for lower anterior are designed to come up through gingiva, so one stage surgery is needed. In the past, we did two stage surgeries a lot when osseo integration is expected to be weak or for GBR. Using the procedure, more stable bone integration was ex expected, but recently, submerged type also uses immediate healing abutment connection, so oh, it is turning into one-stage surgery. According to the implant abutment connection, let's classify them. Implant connection is the part between fixture and abutment. 80% or more clinicians use the internal type, especially TS type is more dominantly used. Ostem has TS and ESS as external type, and US is the external type. US SS TS sections. SS has eight degrees more taper. TS uses eleven degrees conical seal connection. US is similar to Brenner Mark external connection type. The characteristics of that is that the connection between the implant and the abutment is with the butt joint structure. The abutment goes into the implant not so deep as, as the internal connection. Personally, I don't use the US. Currently, most widely used um, connection is the TS. With 11 degree taper and 2.5 millimeter diameter, hex at the bottom. Currently, about 80% of the connection uses this type. Hex is there. Recently, hex structure is not included in the product. TS implants, currently Ostom has a 3.0 to 7.0 millimeter diameters. There are two types. 3.0 and 3.5 are mini connections, 4.0 and above regular connections. 
These two types cannot be mixed for use. TS type implant has very short to very long lengths. When I introduce implants, I would like to show the sections. Here, the TS implant figure from the top of the fixture to the uh, abutment screw head. The height is 3.0 millimeters. This is a very important inf information to have. US, SS, and TS sections are displayed here. When we do implant the prosthesis, I get this question quite a lot. From the top of the implant to opposing tooth, what is the uh, appropriate gap? especially when the vertical gap is short. From the top of the implant to the head of the abutment screw, US 3.7 millimeters, SS 2.3 to 2.65, and 3 millimeters for TS. The height is the minimum prosthesis height. If you use that height, of course, uh, the prosthesis would look weird, but uh, head of the screw cannot be grounded off. Therefore, those are the minimum heights. The share of SS implant among OSTEM implants is 10%. This is my favorite. Unlike TS, it has the octagon structure with 8 degrees Morse taper connection. Above the rough surface, machine the surface color in the gingival level is located. It is also called the gingival level or tissue level implant. I like this because the connection is the strongest connection among the ostem connections. Implant fracture or abutment fractures are found the least with this type. SS implants have evolved. Now you need to remember this. In the past, the head of implant had 4.8 and 6.0 diameters, regular versus wide platforms, especially with the wide platform. The gingival color height was set at 2.0. However, the change of a color has two options, 1.8 and 2.8 millimeters. This you need to note. In the wide platform, I like the height of new height, 2.8. This implant has very short to very long lengths. UCO, if you order more than 50 implants, 50 millimeter long implants can be provided. If you look at the implant catalog, we need to take note of the new changes in the catalog. Here, 4.0 diameter implant body, extra short one is available. It is also true for 4.5, 5.0, and 6.0 implants. Extra short implants are launched which was not available in the past. To get Korea FDA approval for 4.0 and 4.5 diameter implants, the rough surface should be at least 7 millimeter long. Between the machined and the rough surface, uh, there's etched surface. So the rough surface of the implant is a little bit shortened. This is available. This will be helpful to know. SS implants, I want to point this out. SS abutments, there are many options. Personally, I like one feet CAD CAM abutment. Even though you don't use it, what I want to point out is that COM OCTA abutment and COM OCTA PLUS abutment. For the prosthesis, after placing SS implant, ER type, when you use SCRP prosthesis, some people make mistakes. The COM OCTA abutment shown here is the two-piece abutment. It's like a cement type US abutment. However, using the COM OCTA abutment, when you use ER type, 
First, they say that there is a problem. Com octa versus com octa plus. For com octa, eight degrees of internal is in contact, but no contact outside. Com octa plus, the prosthesis covers up to the outside bevel. The bevel is in contact, but internal Morse taper is not in contact. Morse taper is used in com octa. It looks like it has less screw loosening, but if you use ER prosthesis, a problem occurs. Currently, except SS CAT CAM abutment, I use Comocta Plus. Comocta Plus options are available like this. The fixture outside of the fixture is all surrounded by the abutment. There are many options available, so if you choose this, when you place an implant a little bit deeper, Com Octa Plus can be used for the ER type, Com Octa Abutment and ER Prosthesis. When abutment is connected and prosthesis is cemented, when we have to remove this prosthesis, ER type margin is on the fixture level, not abutment level. After you remove it and remove the cement and reconnect it, a problem occurs. The cement on bevel would disappear, creating a problem. The popular ER SCRP type of prosthesis, you need to use Comocta Plus. The margin of a prosthesis should be at the abutment. Then when you remove or reconnect prosthesis, there's a no cement between the fixture and the abutment, no problem. Com octa should not be used with the ER prosthesis. Next, KS implant. It was launched just recently and you may not be familiar with that. Why it was made? Internal connection TS implants are sold quite a lot, but it has caused some fracture. To address the problem, the appearance of the fixture is the same as that of TS. So when you place the implant, the procedure is the same. However, the internal structure is changed. Internal diameter is shortened, so the width is shortened internally and the length is extended. It has the hex structure. The size of a hex is smaller than that of TS. Let's compare. 4.0 implants causes um, fracture. TS versus KS, what do you think? In a word, the thickness of the fixture is increased. The connection is shortened and the length of the connection is extended. The joint stability is maintained, but the titanium wall is increased to prevent fracture. If you look at the numbers, TS, the abutment is inserted into the fixture 2.5 millimeters, KS 3.8 millimeters, much deeper. 2.0 abutment screw in TS is decreased to 1.6 in KS. Looking at this, the impression I get is that the implant is very strong there is one cautionary matter. The connection is deep. Deep connection means when implants are placed in different inclinations, there will be limitations in connecting and disconnecting the ER prosthesis, so there are merits and demerits. I don't know about others, but I'm keenly interested in the whole sizes, screw hole sizes of abutments. With the KS implant, the screw hole size is 2.2 millimeters in the abutment. In the case of TS, 2.4 millimeters in the regular hole. ER type prosthesis, the screw hole can be much smaller. 
That means the resin fracture or in creating occlusal points, uh, there are advantages. KS implant ranges from 3.5 to 5.0 diameters. KS implants in terms of 4.0 millimeter diameter, 3TS versus KS, the connection size is 3.35 with a TS and 3.30 for KS, a little bit smaller, but the bevel inclination is 15 degrees in KS. You need to take note of the numbers in red, the thickness of the titanium wall. I use a TS3 more than TS2 and I use TS4 more than TS3. If you compare TS3 versus 4, the top thickness is 0.35. Even though the diameters are the same, TS4 is wider. When I place 4.0 diameter implant, I use a TS4 for a patient with a strong bite force. KS came out. Compared to TS4, the thickness at the top is smaller, but it gets bigger toward the bottom, so it's much more stronger. Austin launched the product with the fatigue test data, and I also uh, tested myself. I can definitely say KS is stronger than TS. Three tests were done comparing TS 4.0 versus KS 4.0 diameter. For KS, just fatigue test results versus fatigue test with retightening for every 100,000 cycles. Compared to TS, KS is far more stronger in terms of the fatigue test. Among the KS, 30 Newton retightening for every 100,000 cycles showed better strength. So KS is a good implant for a patient with a strong bite force. Classification according to body design. Two, three, four. The numbers are put in the name of the implants in Austin, micro thread. If it is straight, the number two. Six degrees, number four are put, and the number three means slightly tapered, 1.5 degrees. As the taper increases, it has better primary stability in poor quality of bone. TS4 is useful for maxillary posterior region. TS, US, SS, and all implants have numbers at the end. Two is a straight body, and the number increases as it is more tapered. In the anterior mandible, where bone is narrow, MS series is available. MS narrow is at the left. The fixture body and the abutment head is one piece made of titanium alloy. The rough surface at the bottom is RBM surface which is used only for this product among Austin implants. This is the best for lower anterior. I want to talk about the implant surface treatment of Austin. In the past, uh, machined surface used to be used, but the procedures to roughen the surface gets employed. Physical, chemical, and biological method is used to roughen the surface to facilitate the secondary stability, not the primary stability. The reason why you, we use the rough surface is that to have a fast secondary 
integration so that we can load the implant faster and to recover the patient's chewing function in poor bone quality using the enhanced surface also integration can be increased therefore the implant indications has become broadened that's why the surface treatment has been employed surface technology evolution of osteum implants from generation one through four the first one is the RBM surface. At the time, the osseo integration was quite fast and we thought in two months we could load the implant. So we thought no more surface enhancement would be necessary. But as uh, the surface evolved, we realized the necessity of the involvement on the machined surface. Hydroxyapatite is applied to have uh, the roughness of the surface 1.2 to 1.8 micron. This is not used um, in other implants, but uh, MS implant, which is used for lower anterior. Micro thread is employed here in the MS implant. The preferences may vary, but I prefer this one for lower anterior. This is the assay surface which is most widely used today. On the machined surface, not HA, but alumina is applied to create the craters, and etching is done to make micro pits to create rough surface. This started from Strauman. Most implant companies in Korea employ this treatment as well. Titanium grade 4 alloy machined surface is the base and alumina is applied. Sulfuric acid and hydrochloric acid are used to treat the surface for a certain period of time and uh, temperature. Compared to RBM surface, the cell response, osteointegration speed and strength have been increased. So six-week loading protocol is enabled with this surface. The third surface is BA. This is used most in my clinical cases. SA surface is the base of BA. Ultra thin HA coating is done to increase the hydrophilicity compared to SA, which is hydrophobic. This is hydrophilic. Based on SA surface, calcium phosphate solution under certain temperature and time. Hydroxyapatite coats the surface for BA. This is a very tiny nano level coating. Therefore, uh, the particle fallout doesn't create inflammation. At 5,000 times magnification, you cannot tell the difference between the SA and BA surface, but the difference becomes visible at 30,000 magnification. Small hydroxyapatite particles disappear at six weeks after implantation. It increases the OC integration at the beginning, but it disappears later. BA, which is the improved SA, PIC is much higher, and the removal torque to measure the OC integration. BA has much higher uh, value. I experience the surface um, most, the most in my cases. Soy surface is the best one from Austin. The basis is SA. On the SA surface, K material is used to activate osseo integration in the surface. 
using the material, the surface becomes highly hydrophilic, facilitating osseointegration. integration. BIC contact will be increased for faster loading. If you look at here, we do aging on the surface of implant. Ostem does UV photofunctionalization. After assay surface treatment, UV light is used to activate the surface. PA or soy surface does not age in terms of the surface over time. When you place an implant, you don't need UV light irradiation when you use BA and soy. SA has been improved to make BA and soy. This prevents aging. UV treatment is done in advance. Using these treatments, the surface remains active and fresh always. Based on my experience, I've used PA surface in 1,100 cases, and uh, I've I have only two implant failures since 2011. I've compared PA versus SA, and uh, I find the BA is much faster in terms of osseointegration. integration. In the catalog, SA we can load at six to eight weeks. CA four to six weeks, PA four to five weeks, soy at four weeks. And we wonder if we really can load at four weeks. To be safe, I always follow the loading protocol. My loading protocol, at six weeks after implant placement, I measure also ISQ. If it is over 70, I do prosthesis fixture level impression is taken. I order custom abutment one fit. After two weeks before connecting one fit, ISQ is measured. If it is increased, uh, temporary is fabricated and loading begins. So at two months, prosthesis is in the occlusion and abutment level impression is taken to fabricate the final prosthesis, and after a year, screw retightening is done to prevent the screw loosening. That's my protocol. I looked at my cases. I used the BA surface from 2014. Statistically, ISQ reached 87. 39 months long-term follow-up, very high ISQ value has been achieved. If you look at here, ISQ measurement, clinically, 90 or over ISQ is not common. For three years, uh, the surface is used in the mouth, and uh, I see so many values over 90, up to 97. OSTEM provides excellent implant surface. The primary stability is not totally from the implant surface. This is a popular graph. The stability of an implant is based on the primary stability at the time of placement and the secondary stability. OSTEM has very good surface and the design. Not only the primary, but uh, a secondary stability is very good for good total stability. Tapered 1 to 2 kit and implant uh, diameters are appropriate for good primary stability. Macro design and surface design are combined for excellent clinical outcome. All the implants, lengths and diameters from Austin are designed to give very good primary stability of 20 to 45 Newton centimeters so that the implants can be properly placed advantage. It increases primary and secondary stability, so the total stability is maintained without 
the stability deep as in the past. Implant selection criteria based on various evaluation, you can make the selection. As for me, I use the TS implant the most and also BA and SOE services are used as well. The advantage of Austin implant is that uh, the implant diameter increases in 0.5 millimeter increments. When the initial stability is low, you can place one size bigger implant. Depending on bone quality, various lengths of implants are available. TS3 and other implants like SS and US have common thread design. The proper thread design is very favorable for initial stability. Internal connection, I prefer this design because the joint stability is very good, especially the 11 degrees or 15 degrees. The joint stability is very high. There is no gap or mobility at the joint. If properly adjusted, uh, it doesn't cause the cortical bone resorption in the long term. There is a disadvantage compared to US and SS. Internal connection doesn't have a vertical stop. The abutment, depending on the force, tightening the abutment, it can go into the implant. So screw loosening at the joint can occur uh, sometimes. We need to note that. According to the finite element analysis, the greatest stress is not at the cortical bone. The greatest stress is below the cortical bone. So the crescent bone does not get resorbed. That's the advantage. However, if you place the implant higher, due to bone resorption, if the cortical bone goes down and implant fixture is exposed compared to other implanted system, bone loss can occur faster, leading to implant fracture. For internal connection implants, all the surface needs to be submerged deeper and the implant depth should consider three to four millimeters of biologic width. And ultimately, TS type implants for proper prosthesis, the fixture top should be located nine millimeters below the prosthesis top. Ultimately, the conclusion is that depending on the area, I use different fixtures in the anterior or in the premolar area, I use TS type and the four, four anteriors in the mandible, MS. If conditions are good in the posterior region, SS are used. If two or three need to be splinted, if you need to do GBR or implants need to be placed deep, TS implants are selected with the 5.0 or bigger ones. I have talked about the types and advantages of Austin implants. Thank you. Thank you very much for the very good lecture. Thank you for having me. That was a very easy to understand lecture and a very succinct lecture. Sorry for not giving you enough time. How do you feel as the second speaker of this prosthodontics on Friday? Last time I saw Professor Kim Son-young's 
lecture. As a prosthodontist, I'm glad we have this kind of uh, prosthodontics program and uh, I enjoy it. With prosthodontist colleague of mine, this is a good place to discuss implant pr prosthetics, which is very interesting. I believe this will be very helpful for me as well. The first question, OSTEM company recently launched the systems, including the KES system. I believe you have used it. What's your impression? What has been the good things or are there any things that need to be improved? Most dentists would not be familiar with the name KS, which is not promoted actively. I have placed 35 KS implants. When I tell them the KS implant is very good, my name is Kim ki -sung, so my initial is KS Kim, and they say, is that because you made it? No. Austin regards the connection very important, and uh, they studied it, and uh, they came up with KS implant. KS has a deeper connection, even though the connection itself is smaller, it is still very safe. According to Carl Misch, if you increase just a little bit of titanium, it increases the fatigue strength quite considerably, and the, the wall has become very thick. 4.0 and 3.5 millimeter implants have improved in the fracture strength, Due to limitations of internal connection, people complained about the fracture, so Austin came up with this. I just placed 35 of them, so I cannot officially say it's better, but as I accumulate more data, I will talk about that later. Thank you. These days, we talk about uh, implant fractures. The reason why they came up with KS implant is to improve against the fracture. I believe we will have a better results in the future. I have prepared some slides. Would you bring up, please, on the screen? Regarding implant fracture, As you can see here, you talked about implant design and materials which play a very important role. And another aspect to it is that the patient's bite force occlusal adjustment when we fabricate the prosthesis, so that is very important. These two patients, both of them are bruxism patients. The top one is a female and the bottom one is a male. At the bottom, the occlusal surface is wide as she is a bruxism patient. And um, you can see both of them are fractured. In the bottom, there's anterior cantilever. The mesial implant is fractured. Occlusal adjustment is very important when we fabricate the prosthesis to prevent implant fracture. Next question. Implant surface. BA, SOI, SOI. Such implant surfaces accelerate the healing. As you briefly touched upon, loading at four to six weeks, did you have any problem with the loading? Actually, I am kind of conservative, so I don't really prefer doing things fast. I don't do a lot of immediate implant loading. The surface is very good, but according to the general protocol, 
At six weeks, ISQ is measured and the loading is done at eight weeks. PA or soy introduced by the company, the loading time is much faster. I was asked to talk about the advantages of BA surface and I tested the BA surface and I asked the permission from the patients. At every two weeks after implant placement, I measured ISQ values. In general, we do not touch the implant for a month after implant placement. When an uh, ISQ value is 70 at the beginning, I measured every two weeks the ISQ values, except those with the poor bone quality. I noticed no stability dip or decreasing primary stability from week four. So after week two or week four, I checked the ISQ value and I prepared the prosthesis and loaded at week five and no problems. But can I do it like this continuously? With the same protocol? It's not my character to do it fast, but um, when I use BA or soy, I measure ISQ at week four and uh, I load at week six, two weeks earlier than before, except for poor bone quality or on the maxilla. So the biological change is accelerated. Yes, compared to SA, definitely it's improved. One more thing. In 1986, I began to place implant Corvent, and later Bronemark began to be imported. At the beginning, we used the, the external connection system. When we placed an implant, then all of them were external system. Over time, until early 2000s, we used external system. Now the internal connection is in the mainstream, the TS system. Why do you think the U.S. system disappeared? I believe you placed the U.S. external system most. Yes, at the beginning when I started, we didn't have many local implants and I used the 3i external implant, the imported ones. And I began to experience the internal system. The joint stability is the advantage. And when you place an external implant deeply, you need to trim the bone to connect the healing abutment, especially if you're a beginner. The profile drill was made to do that job. The internal system has internal connection, so it's easier to place the implant. Based on my experience, as you know, the external implant, uh, after a few years, uh, when you do the cleaning, there's a foul odor, and sensitive patients feel that too. And the uh, mobility at the joint causes inflammation, and the food can be impacted. So um, some patients are very sensitive to the odor. The problem is drastically decreased with the internal system. That's why I adopted the internal system. What do you think? I used to use external system for single tooth restoration to place a single implant. If you use the external connection, it can have a mobility, but when you switch to the internal system, TS system, I can see mobility has decreased quite drastically. So I switched from external to internal system. That's why I believe TS is in the mainstream these days. But there are still people who prefer the external system. So we also need to let them know uh, the disadvantages of the internal system. You are right. External system is strong against the fracture compared to the internal system. Yes, definitely. 
on from the long term perspective, external is not necessarily bad compared to internal. More stable external implants ob observed in the long term. For the screw loosening, the internal system has the sink down phenomenon, which is observed less with the external system. So, not one system can win everything. So, everything has pros and cons. For the beginners, and especially those who want to begin or stem implants, do you have any tips or advices? In the past, it was difficult to, to get implant training. Now, on the YouTube and Austin provide a lot of uh, implant training. What I want to say here is that those who are beginning are focused on how to place the implants. I majored in prosthodontics, but still I use guided surgery, Austin's one guide system to place implants 100% of the cases, software, CT, surgical guide would cost some money in order to have a good prosthesis and to reduce prosthetic complications. We need to place implants properly. That's top-down approach. That should be the focus point of the beginners to have good prosthesis. One guided system, guided surgery, um, should be considered. That's my strong recommendation. I totally agree with you. When we do not use the one guided surgery, there's a huge gap between the beginners and skilled dentists using the one guided surgery. The beginner can place implants close to the skilled people. It costs some money, but uh, you do the designing yourself. A 3D printer is available from Austin and other companies. I could learn it very quickly, so you need to make efforts in that direction. We have a question sent to us real time. In the single case of the second molar in the mandible, I experience the screw loosening of the prosthesis frequently. What implant system do you use in that area? So what system do you use? The second molar in the mandible receives uh, quite a strong chewing force. SS system is the best. It is used when you have very good bone and soft tissue. As a system is the best, not only the implant type, but prosthesis mechanism is important. I always use ER type. I make a hole, SS implant. The abutment is SS, but it is one piece. And I make a hole to tighten the screw regularly. TS is most widely used one, but when we recall a patient for checking, you don't need to do the retightening for SS or external type. It is not necessary to open the screw hole and do the retightening, but for TS, the retightening is required for a single type in the second molar in the mandible. SS type is the first choice. If you use the TS, you need to retighten every year. Most dentists do not like to do the retightening, but that is the most important thing. It is a very cumbersome job to do the retightening. For implant prosthesis, screw loosening put us into trouble. So we need to be very careful not to make the screw loosened. Making a good selection of implant is also important. 
One thing that we tend to overlook is that to instruct the patient to change the diet when the screw gets loosened often after some time the patient tend to eat hard food lateral force is applied to the implant causing screw loosening so we dentists need to instruct the patients regarding the diet to be careful about chewing hard food to prevent the frequent screw loosening. Personally, I ask Austin to make a breakthrough development on a abutment that do not have screw loosening. The screw shape or surface treatment can make that and I hope they develop something like that. So it's like strong bonding between the fixture and the abutment. We'll try to make uh, such development. Thank you very much, Dr. Kim ki We would like to invite you next time to give us another lecture. In the next prosthodontics on Friday, on the 11th of September, at 8 p.m. on the Friday, Dr. Park Jong Hyun will talk about impression taking for aesthetic anterior implant prosthesis. Thank you very much for staying with us until the end.